What's this? Is it a new tier on my Patreon list? Yep. It does the exact same as the previous tier. You just chip in a little bit more if you totally want to to become the Hatter's Teacup Pledger. Ah, I noticed a lot of other people doing it, so I thought I might as well do it too. Again, I keep all my stuff non paywalled, so you really don't have to do this if you don't want to. And even still, I'll still love you anyway, because the support you've given me is outstanding. All the happy comments and stuff like that. Nah. <laughs> so, yeah, again, I don't pay all my stuff. It's all free to view whenever you want. But if you want, you can support me a little bit more. And with this, your name will be a slightly different color just to show it off. <laughs> Thanks very much, and let's hop on with the video. Mm -hmm. Hello again, Hatters. Bet most of you have been waiting for this. I wanted to make sure Skyrim wasn't going to get blown up again with another fantastical update to celebrate the game's decade-long popularity by updating and fixing something that really didn't need to be fixed, updated, and or touched. And although I'm surely wrong here, it felt more like an attack against modders if I'm honest. But then again, the owners of the game have the rights to do this. Personal views out of the way, welcome to the third Devourment Refactor install video. Now, last time I did make a pretty good job of it, but I missed out on the body slide stuff. This time around, I want to make sure I cover the important areas as well as the common pitfalls I've noticed plenty of people fall into. A double belly bug, rotten flesh, the database is corrupted and must be recreated, J containers, lip fire, that kind of stuff. So, for starters, the versions of these mods is very important. If you download a wrong or different version than what Big Sister is going to use, then you're going to run into problems. Secondly, you do have to download a rake of mods. It does create a framework of mods that lots of other different mods require, so it's not all bad. Links in the video description. A reminder again, the version number I'm going to use is very important, so please follow it just to avoid issues. Be like Santa Claus. Make a list, check it twice. Check off the mods as you install them. Make your computer remember for you, because let's be honest, human brain is mashed potato sometimes, in one ear, out the other. Thirdly, I'll be using Nexus Mod Manager. I don't use Vortex because it's all new and scary. Just kidding. I don't see the importance of learning an entirely new mod manager for the purposes of doing exactly what I can with Nexus Mod Manager. But honestly, any mod manager you're comfortable with is fine. Even dragging and dropping the files in. No. <laughs> Just follow my install order and you should be golden. Fourthly, check the chapters in the video if you're in a hurry. They'll have titles to indicate what part we're covering. Ready then? Let's get going. Nearly forgot to do it. But yeah, we need to start with a fresh copy of Skyrim. You know what that means. <laughs> this is gonna be sweet. Wait, what's that? Oh, come on. Why must you? So, for the very first part, we're gonna get the manual mods installed, and we're gonna get the downgrade patcher working. So, basically, Skyrim is version 1.6. We need to downgrade it to version 1.5 to get it to work with the mods we want. So, you want to head to this unofficial Skyrim Special Edition Downgrade Patcher. Quite a mouthful. <laughs> Files, and we're looking to get this one here. It's a bit of a beefy file, but it kind of does as much as it possibly can. There's other versions down there, but I get a feeling that's going to get a little bit choppy and specific. And basically, I want this video to be as reliable for as long as it can. So we're going to go for this version here. Make sure it's what you're getting, 3 gigabytes. It's gonna take a bit of a time to download, so give it some time and I'll be ready. The next step then is to get the script extender. That absolute magic, that wonder file that helps all these other mods work. The sticky glue that holds us all to... Okay, 
So we're going to be getting the special edition because we're downgrading our Skyrim from 1.6 to 1.5. So this version here, grab a copy of that. And it's tiny, so should download nice and quick. And the final then manually installed mod we're going to grab is Engine Fixes Part 2. Now see, there's only just this one option here, so just make sure the version and all that other text looks the exact same that you're downloading. Grab a copy of that. So we're going to let those download and then we'll move on to the next part. Now then, that took quite some time. So what we're basically going to do then is with the full patcher, it will look exactly like this funky donkey program. I'm going to double click it and let it do its jazz good business. So this is what it's going to look like when it pops up. It might take some time because it's a big old file. Perhaps your antivirus might freak out. But look, this is what hackers use. And if she can use it like this, it should be safe. Trust me, I trust my good instincts quite a lot on the internet. So it'll try and locate where your Skyrim is. If it doesn't, you might need to go locate yourself. If you have a Steam copy, that should pop up automatically is what I'm saying. Click start patching and it should do its funky business. Ah, so that's what it looks like then. Once it's done, it'll literally just say, finish patching, enjoy your game. And yeah, close that. It's a big old chonker of a file and it served this purpose. So up to you if you want to keep it on your computer, but I would honestly say just delete it. Quickest way will be to hold shift and click delete and then that will permanently permanently delete it it won't just send it to the recycling bin but word of warning let's just get our Skyrim working before we delete this heckin chonker so next step then is the two manually installed mods script extender and engine fixes I'm using WinRare so we'll just get those opened like that yeah so yeah we'll just get these two open like that and we want to get Steam open. So this is how we basically get to the file location. You might have your own way of doing it. I find this is the easiest to show people because I got shortcuts, but you need to make them yourself. So right click it, manage, browse local files. And what we want to do then is minimize you. And then this is where your Skyrim is located. I'm going to grab this guy here and dump them into there. That's that one done. And then you want to get the script extender, grab all these files, dump them into there. Done also. This is what you'll be loading Skyrim from. Most mod managers will pick it up that it's there and launch from there. If you launch it from the executable, it's more convenient to create a shortcut and then just dump that onto your desktop or anywhere convenient. Haha, <laughs> 10 out of 10 spelling. So look, that's the manual mods out of the way. Next step will be all the mods we can install with the mod managers. Okay, so we're now on to the part where you download all the required mods to get this working. It's quite a long list, so I'm going to go through each of them on Nexus mods here. Just remember to pay attention to the version that I'm downloading and make sure the version you're downloading is the same. So, first up is unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. There only is just this one version, so let's grab that. Start to download on that one. Close that up. Next one, address library for SKSE plugins. I'm not even going to pretend to know what this stuff does, but see, here's the first pitfall. Now, I myself would just download this because I think it's the main one, but anniversary edition we're not using, special edition. So that's the first kind of pitfall anybody could have fallen into, honestly. So that's the important reason why I'm doing this. That's address library started download. Part two is what we needed to install manually. We've done that and we want to have a quick look here. So once again, check the versions. This one says it's for SE, not AE. Download the SE version for 1.5. This will say some stuff. We're fine, don't worry about it. That's script extender. That should be on your computer by default. If not, please update your computer. Address library, we just started that download there, so grab a copy of that. Just look at me spending all my bandwidth. <laughs> Next up, NetScript Framework. A lot of these mods are just... 
Now the next mod that's required is the .NET Script Framework. Another one of these mods that makes other mods work. I'm probably going to say that quite a lot, but yeah. This will be the version to get. It's not mentioning any, eh, well, as you can see right there, SE. It's not mentioning AE. You want to just avoid those mods. That does say DLL plugin loader, but from what I remember, that's not actually required. It's a case where you can use one or the other, but if you use DLL loader, you end up breaking things. Next up is Sky UI, BIOS and SE version again, so grab a copy of that. See, the anniversary edition, it broke a lot of stuff, and I've got a bad feeling once again it's going to splinter modding communities, because people then have to update their mods, but some of these people probably aren't even around anymore, probably aren't even bothered, so woohoo, way to celebrate 10 years. Next mod, MCM Helper. It's a mod that gets mods to work. Careful with this now. Remember, we're working with just 1.5. So, just gotta make sure we're grabbing the correct mods. Next mod then is the Maximum Compatibility Skeleton. This is where the bellies basically hook on to where they should be. And it's basically been made so loads of other mods use this as well. I'm not even gonna pretend to notice how or know how this all works. I just know that it adds a skeleton that the meshes sit onto, and many, many, many other mods work with this. So, yeah, maximum compatibility skeleton. Race menu, a wonderful mod that gives a complete overhaul to the character creation system that also lets you save what a character looks like. And, yeah, it's wonderful. Here we go now. See how it says Anniversary Edition? So let's have a quick look. Special Edition. Uh, which latest? Hmm. Nice. Which means, well, okay, this is the last version I downloaded from the last install video, so there we go. So, keep an eye on the version here. Uh, 0.416. This is the version I'm downloading here, because it worked. And there's no point in going out my way to figure out what all the newer versions do, so grab a copy of that. Remember, a version number is very important here. Next up, UI extensions. I believe this is for the menus to appear when you use the lesser power, uh, development power to set things in place. So this is looking good, see it only has the one version. I want to grab a copy of that. Console Utility SSE. Again, I don't know what it does, but here we go again. Be careful with the versions here, because as you can see, 1.6, 1.5. That's basically what it's just going to be, is we just need to go through this carefully and pick out the right versions of the mods, because anything can go wrong along this way, and I want to make sure we can avoid that this time. <laughs> Any time I touch these mods, it's on the 9th of October when I did the last video. Here we go again. Um, anniversary Edition, Special Edition. So just follow me, and we'll get this working. So now, Jake Tainers. I had to do a bit of an experimenting with this, but this is the version you're looking for here. 4.1.113, the last JC release before AE. Make sure you're getting this exact version I'm showing you here, because uh, if you download the wrong version, it will say the database is corrupted. So make sure you're getting that right version. Next up will be Power of Trees Papyrus Extender. Same old, same old. Keep an eye out to make sure you're not grabbing the AE, but grab the SE version instead. That's that out of the way. Next, Spell Perk Item Distributor. Um, yeah, you get it now, surely, right? You avoid the AE, you go for the SE version. That's all we gotta do here. And it's literally just gonna be this over and over again for the rest of the mods. Custom Skills Framework. This is what lets you have the Prey Pred versions. Um, pretty much just this version here. Same old, same old. More information console. I like this mod. It gives you, as it says on the tin, more information on the console. Be aware, AE version, SE version. That's what we're looking to get. Now, Finesse isn't required, but it's one of those mods that plenty of other mods require, so I'd still recommend grabbing it, because it's 
helpful. So, we're just gonna grab the latest version. 9th of October. <laughs> There's no AE version for this, I don't think, so this will be the version I downloaded last time, and it'll still work. The next mod is CBBE, a female body replacer. It's completely optional, but you can get it if you want it. Next mod then is Body Slide, an outfit studio. This is the mod you'd use to basically build your bodies. It's complicated and simple at the same time, but follow the instructions and you'll see what we'll do with this when the time comes. So, just grab a copy of this. It's an external mod, so it doesn't really need all that much updating. So, grab a copy of that. And second last mod, at this point I just recommend this as a modder. Alternative Start basically changes that long boring cart ride intro to be a much more convenient one where you spawn in a jail cell at some unknown part of Skyrim. It gives you options then as to how you want to start your Skyrim, just so you're not always starting with that cart ride intro. It's also much quicker and can skip the cart ride intro entirely. There's options if you want to do it. Look, it's just worth it. So grab a copy of that mod. And then the last mod, of course, the bread and butter, the moment you've been waiting for, the environment refactor mod. So there'll be a link there to go to the page. Just remember to follow what the site says, but uh, we'll be grabbing the 11th of October version. So grab a copy of that. And once that's done downloading, we'll check the number of mods we have, and then we'll get our mod manager ready. So in this part of the video, I want you basically just to double check your list and make sure you have them all downloaded. On my list, I have 22 different links to 22 different mods. And in my downloads folder, I have 22 different mods downloaded. Just double check and make sure you're not missing anything crucial, because if you're missing any of these kind of J containers, place menu, if you're missing any of these important ones, the whole thing may not just work. It might just end up crashing. So just double check your list and make sure you have them all downloaded. Okay, let's move on. Okay, cool. So, I have my Nexus Mod Manager open. You hopefully have whatever you're using. And this is what you want to do here. You basically just want to add all these mods here. So, get this menu open. Click and drag. Select all these. All 22 of the mods. And add. And it is going to take a little bit of time. But they're basically just going to get loaded in. So we can see the number down here rising. And it's just going to add them one by one. We just click on here again you can just see them being queued added and all that good stuff and we pretty much just want to wait until all of them are added some mods are bigger than others some are just magical bits of text that make skyrim do funny things like eat people <laughs> now that looks like they're all out there and yeah, there we go, 22. So it's just important to keep track of the amount of mods you should have installed, or expect to have them installed. And basically what I want to do here then is just install them by the order recommended here. So we've done this before. We're just going to start and go through this list here. So if you're using Vortex, install this in the exact same order. Um, if any tough guy out there that uses Vortex, if you want to make tough guy or gal, if anyone wants to make a Vortex version of this, be my guest, because I... Nah, I don't want to use Vortex. It's mostly because I understand this. Now, we're unofficial Skyrim patch. SKSE library. Now, you could always just use the text box here to search it, but um, you could see other mods I might have installed, and I have a feeling some of them might not be appropriate. So we're just going to ignore those uh, engine fixes. That'll be the part one. Anything that does come up, you should just hit yes to all. If you're an advanced modder and you know what you're doing, then take a closer look into it. But in general, it's better just to kind of um, overwrite it. NetScript framework. Next one is Sky UI. And this is pretty much all you just want to do. You just want to go down through the list and install them in this order. 
MCM helper, then race menu. There you are. Jeez. Time for me to get fitted with new glasses. Uh, UI. UI extensions. Console. Seems so, so. There you are. Papyrus. Hello, Papyrus from Undertale. Fun fact. Papyrus is the scripting engine name for Skyrim. Is that right there? Papyrus utility. Now, J containers. J containers is a mod that saves other mods, files, and settings. Papyrus extender. Power of tree. Yep. Yeah. Power tree, spell item distributor. There you go. SP anti -I. Meh. <laughs> I miss that person that would always just comment meh on my videos. <laughs> ah, I think they left because they realized I wasn't. They weren't getting under my skin as much as they hoped. Libfire. Finesse. Well, it looks like we might not have installed a skeleton at the start, but this is the kind of mod that it pretty much just goes in its own place, so it's not as risky installing this. So we'll just fly through it now. You pretty much just want to click next through this. We have race menu, that's the default. Like, if you have other mods you're going to be paying attention to, that'll make sense. But for this, it's just pretty much click next, 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 through. And then that'll get the skeleton one installed. Then come the tree mine mods on the side I kind of recommend to get installed. CDBE. Yeah, so for this we're going to install the underwear version. Next we'll be doing the body slide and outfit studio. And then alternative start. And last but not least, the piece of resistance, the environment refactor. <laughs> Hello. What a handsome group of names. <laughs> Now then, just flick through this, see what's happening. <laughs> Come on, let me do it. Let me have this moment. <laughs> so, next. Mm, nah, we don't need that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There used to be a different menu, but I think they just wanted to simplify it. Keep it as easy as possible. Anything that does pop up, just click yes to all. And that should be everything. Click into your plugin list, and this is roughly what yours should look like. If not, go back and check to make sure you checked everything off the list. And what I'll do is the final part here before we give it a quick test run is close your Nexus mod manager or your mod manager tool and then reopen it just so it gives it a chance to recognize that body slide has been installed. So bear me one moment. So you've freshly restarted your Nexus mod manager and you should see you have these options up here now. We're going to do the body slide stuff here. Now this stuff is tricky. So by all means, um, experiment with you in, in your own time. I just want to do the most bare bones here to get this work with these. So outfit body, you want to click here and click underwear physics because we're good people here. And then presence, we're going to click curvy because lockdowns did not nothing. Nothing to help our waistlines. <laughs> and then you want to click build morphs. I don't understand what this does, but I've been told by everyone that it's what you want to click just to make sure the bellies work properly. And then batch build. And then you want to just click build for this. If anything does pop up, it might mention the type of body. You just want to match it to CBBE underwear physics or whatever you're selecting up here. And then just build it. 
and then this basically takes every outfit in the game and builds a curvy body for it. I believe it's female only. So once that's done, we need to do the thing I missed out on last time. Click choose groups and development equip bellies. This, you can experiment with this if you want, but there's outfit conversions and I've never used them, so I don't know how to work with them. But equip bellies basically means that whenever you do swallow someone, you'll grow a belly out of your outfit. So even if you're wearing a steel chest plate, a belly will grow out of the out of it instead of inflating your armor or outfit. Because I prefer it when a belly sticks out. I've stuck with it long enough. I think it's a more interest in that way. But yeah, that's what I missed out on last time. Click equip bellies, check just that and nothing else, and then build again. And then that's it. That's all we really need to do on that side. But just for good measure, you want to launch Finis, and then um, Skeleton Arm Fix. If you're using any mods, you may need to read up on this, but that's why I believe you just need to click for this, and then Update Finis Behavior. This is just so people don't T-pose if you're installing animation mods. You just want to let that run, do its thing, and it should be done. Now, that's everything done there. That should be absolutely everything you need to get the environment working. So I'm going to give it a quick run, and then we'll do the finish off from there. So, catch you in-game. Now then, we should be good to go. I could load an old save, but those depend on mod start. Probably not going to work. Let's present to ourselves in the game. Okay, looking good so far. No major issues yet. So, we're just gonna make ourselves... ...girl. <laughs> and then, just to do the quick tests on this... ...clear that place at the 7th one. Let's make a copy of ourselves. And I wanna go into development settings. This is mostly just a quick test to make sure everything's working. You wanna switch on endo anyone, because normally you can't just go up and endo NPCs. They need to trust you for it, and, you know, you don't even trust yourself. It's like that meme, trust nobody, not even yourself. I wanna grab Endo, and try this. Hey, Ta-da! <laughs> so yeah, that's looking good so far. So, let's just head in here, because an odd thing about development is, if you do go into the dependencies, it might say some of them are missing. My understanding is, is that scrambled bugs is nice but not required, as is bug fixes SSE. It's required but not needed. So, even if it says that there, it's nothing to worry about, honestly. But yeah, this is it. Looks as though it's all working good and fine now. Body physics isn't working, but that's a different kind of worms. Let's get a quick test here. Yeah, so head into the menu here and the Pray Dialog key, you need to set that to G. Well, you can set it to any key you want, but that's been the classic for me, so I'm going to stick with that. Once you have Pray Dialog key, you set, press G, and you should be able to talk to them. Which, they might say a couple of interesting things. Hmm. Nice. So, really fast dialogue. You can install a mod called Who's Throw Dough, and that should space out that dialogue so it doesn't skip that fast. As well as with um, the face not moving, you can install expressive females or expressive males, and they should. Get out of there. Expressive males and females and your character should move their mouth as they burp. But yeah, other than that, that looks like it's fully functional. So, we've reached it again. This is the third time we've done this. So, that should cover everything. So for the final part before I finish out the video, I just want to mention a couple of common pitfalls. So, first one is, 
if every single enemy you eat it does something like this. Rough non dead flesh is causing your stomach to spasm uncontrollably. It means you installed the wrong version of the lip fire. Go back and check to make sure you got the correct version, like what I had in the video. Another one is J containers. Now, originally it was because you were installing the wrong version, but it actually turns out you need to be installing the latest current version. So go back to the point in the video, I probably have it highlighted on screen here. Thank you future me. And that'll show you the correct version to install. Another bug which I've called the double belly bug. It generally happens if you've built like the equipable, equipable belly on something else on top of each other. You'll swallow an out character and your outfit will expand but another belly will also be on top of it as well so you'll see the outfit stretched out but then you'll see struggles coming through it as well and in that case just head back to the part in the body slide you'll see it on screen here the link the timestamp just do it that way and then that should clear up that bug so before i move on to the end of it all i want to quickly show off the skill tree so go into your mod config uh, it's the first option here skill trees select either of these and you'll be taken to it once you exit out of the menu so i'm going to click the predator skill tree be taken there as you'd expect, swallowing prey, digesting them, and doing stomach damage will increase your skill with this. And the perks mainly increase your ability to do that. So first perk, Voracious, increases your odds of swallowing them. Iron Stomach increases the amount of time you'll hold them down by. Strong Acid increases the damage per second. Silent Swallow if you're a sneaky character, that can make it so you can sneak around and get them without anyone else seeing them, and so forth. Yeah. Greater gasps. Yeah, so that's pretty much the predator skill tree. It increases your ability to be a predator as you'd expect. I believe by the default settings, every time you level up by 10, you can swallow another person. So it's worth getting that up. Makes your job a lot easier as a predator. And on the opposite side of things, when the shoe is on the other foot, we have the prey skill tree. This, as you'd expect, increases as you're as you're swallowed, as you struggle as you last longer in a predator's stomach and as you basically escape. Here's the fun part I like about it. Struggling actually does damage to your predator and in some cases you can get enough damage into them that they actually end up dying. So that's interesting, is it? you don't see that very much. But yeah, you've other perks that once that help you avoid being swallowed off together and acid resistance as well as things like being able to stand up quickly after being spat out so yeah, that's the prey and the predator skill tree. So before I finish up the video, I want to fly through a few of the important options in the development menu here. So right off the bat, this is more like a stats menu. You can see your stats, stuff like that. Numbers if you're into them. General settings, I'm going to go through a couple of these. So prey dialogue key. Just, I find it best to set it to G. It's a commonly used key with development versions. You have these other keys as well. Um, I generally don't set them because there's lesser powers for them. And my understanding is that there's no cooldown to them. So you can just keep mashing the war key until you eventually get it. Skull collecting, you can enable that for all NPCs. Basically just means whenever you digest someone, you collect their skull. So you can build up a little collection. I originally like thought of it as like the Alien vs Predator. There's a Predator movie where Predator 2, I think, the, the alien kills a human, basically cleans off his skull and collects it as a trophy. I was like, oh cool, it's just like that, but the more I look into this now, I kind of get a little weirded out. But you can reform people's skulls that you collect by swallowing their skull. So that's a really cool, that's a really cool feature. Whoever enabled that is a really cool person, definitely, yeah. Um, mess with those settings, experiment with them. Now, difficulty selection. This is a bit of an important one here because it contains more numbers, but basically the ones I find most important here is to click on Endo Anyone. When you have this switched on, you can basically cast the Endo spell on anyone you want and it'll work that way. Uh, it's non-hostile, so they won't get angry. If you have it off, for example, it'll come up like the screenshot you'll see here saying they don't trust you enough. So you'll have to then do a mission for them or make, do something to make them like you. You have all these other options you can mess with as well. Difficulty present, you can click into that, click a preset or you can make your own. 
I generally just recommend keeping your step ring, but here's a very important one you might want to have a look at. So, if you set it to player avoidant, you'll never be swallowed. If you set it to player centric, you'll be the only one that'll get targeted in combat form. I think you can still be pred if you want to cast the spells, but there's your choices there. Another important one is swallow heal. So basically, as it says, when it's on, anyone that gets swallowed gets their health refilled so they have a chance to escape. With it off, when someone's swallowed, they don't get their health refilled, so it's best to weaken your prey before eating them, like what you do with the older versions. And that just about covers that section there. Down here, we have the options for essential NPCs. You know, digestion options here. Player can be digested, non-essential NPCs, so if you turn it off, basically no one's going to get digested. If you turn this on, you can easily break quests. So, for example, Civil War, Ulfric needs to survive for now. If you have that on and, you know, some random soldier swallows him and gets lucky, he can end up digesting and then the whole quest chain is kind of broken. You have options here to enable what kind of predators. So you get the women, the men, and the creatures. So, if you wanted women to only be predators, you disable these two, that sort of thing. If you want to make it so Spriggans don't get swallowed, there's the option. If you want the Wemmer machines to do a little bit of FNAF action, keep that on. <laughs> Ouch! Man, that's gonna pinch pretty badly. <laughs> Moving on, uh, next option is the visual effects and sound effects. Visual effects, this is basically um, whenever an NPC humanoid gets swallowed, what will come out the other end is just clean bones. Which I found quite surprising, Khajiit, Orc, Elf, those kind of beast races like that, they have different skeletons. I found that very surprising. And yeah, likewise with the skulls too, you can collect beast race skeletons, skulls, things like that. Uh, creatures will always be the generic pile because creating a skeleton for every single one of them is tricky, I can imagine. I think there's a special one for dragons, maybe I'll see that one day. And yeah. You know, your options here as well. Predator titles, say you swallow a rabbit or a follower swallows a rabbit first time, they'll then get, um, I don't know, say Lydia, Bane of Rabbit, Bane of Rabbits. Um, it tends to stick with them, so Lydia will always be then called Bane of Rabbits, um, even if she swallows other things. So if you like their names changing, you can turn that on. Combat acceleration, when you're in combat, you'll basically digest dead prey much, much quicker. So you can make space for new ones. <laughs> for dialogue, yeah. You just press G. If you're a prey or a prey, you get fun dialogue. Live prey digestion time multiplier. I understand that if you turn that up, you'll do more damage. You'll do and take more damage by some of stuff. If you lower it, it'll take longer. Dead prey digestion time. I like to set that to 30 in seconds in my game. Um, mostly because I like looking at the belly, but I don't want to spend 10 minutes looking at it. And you have loads of other options here. Vanilla weight gain, that's the um, yeah, player that's set. NPC weight, 0, between 0 and 100. You can set that when you're creating your character hand. If you turn this up, basically just makes so every time you digest someone, you will gain a bit of vanilla weight. Now there is a weight management system with this mod, so your choice. Tinker with the settings, see how you like it. Here's another important one, multi prey mode. So you can set it the classic where it's only one person at a time, or you can set multi prey where it's um you know every ten levels in the war skill you'll be able to swallow more, ten or twelve. Um you can set it to unlimited if you want to be able to eat everyone autom automatically. Next thing, become your killer. I believe it's here because it's a legacy feature and people will just keep asking for it until they get it. My understanding is it's ludicrously buggy and broken and dangerous, so it's best just to save. Um, it's best just to save before you go using it, but it's pretty much not recommended. Um, they just said it's like the, the coding for it. It's not really something you're supposed to do. It will also work with creatures, but as I've said in the creature videos, notoriously buggy. You're gonna crash, and it's gonna crash often. So. It's a fun thing to do, but say before you do it, and if you want to continue on, go for it, but 
odds are it's just gonna get broken as you go on. Price stripping every time, like this is on by default so if you swallow someone on heavy armor you'll spit them out and their armor separately. So you turn that off they basically get swallowed with their armor and you'll spit them out and they'll still have their armor on. Cooldown times. This is a bit of an important one. Creatures have can basically do it do it a vor attempt every four seconds. NPCs can do a vor attempt every six seconds, and followers can do it every ten seconds. So basically what this means is the shorter the number, the more attempts your follower can make before if they fail vor attempts. Turn it up, it'll take them longer between attempts. Dying screams. Yeah, some people are into it, some people are not. Your choice. Macromancy. There's spells with Devourment Refactor that they see basically let you grow taller or shrink. And that's the option for it there. Well, that's not the option there. The option is to mess with it. So, yeah. That's an option if you want to mess with that. Locational Morphs. There's a very important one here. People always tend to ask the most. Elimination Lotus. Locus? You know, I should really learn that word properly, but basically this one, Elimination Locus, whenever your characters digest the prey, they tend to get a bit of a dump truck, but you uncheck this one to basically stop that. The boob stuff? Mmm, experiment with yourself. It's tricky. You know, they just experiment with these settings if you must. I generally tend to leave them alone because things get weird if you mess with them too much. Weight gain? You know, mess with it yourself. As you digest prey, your character will get bigger, thicker. Um, I believe skeleton scale, skeleton scaling. Uh, it'll make you taller. Yeah, there you go there. Um, instead of gaining weight, you gain height. So if you want to slowly become a giant as you eat people, that's the option right there. Just have fun trying to get through doors. Female weight gain, a big huge long list of really complicated looking things so I don't go near it. Male weight gain. <laughs> I like how you have the option there, but nah. Debugging, you can do things like this. Unrestricted mode lets you eat things that you probably shouldn't, like doors, any kind of item like chairs you can activate, you can eat it, so forth. You have the options here to reset if you get stuck. And I do believe that effectively covers everything. So thanks very much for tuning in. I hope this video did help. And the other thing I hope, not trying to be lazy here, but I hope this is as reliable as it can be for a long time. Because I made that other video and then Anniversary Edition came around. So I'm hoping this video does the best. But thanks very much for tuning in and I'll catch you next time. Yeah, the belly tends to do that whenever you make changes in development. So yeah, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time.